You're welcome back. Now, there are complaints from uh, importers over 200% surge in duty amid Naira fluctuation. That's what we're discussing right now. And Nick Aguli, a public affairs analyst, is uh, here with us. Nick, good morning and welcome to the program. Yes, good morning. Uh, 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 Nick, your audio doesn't seem to be friendly this morning. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, so, so good morning to our viewers. Okay, uh, okay. now let's just begin. Uh, they say importers are groaning over 200% surge in duty amid Naira fluctuation. But let's leave importers first and talk about the Naira uh, fluctuation. What comments do you have? Naira now is uh, 1,030 Naira per dollar, at least in the black market, which uh, was not supposed to exist anymore because of the present uh, uh, government's policies and all that. Uh, Mephile is in uh, under lock and key, <laughs> as it were, uh, because I know that there are remote courses that they have said uh, I'm making them to, uh, to prosecute him. But now we have the immediate causes, which were policies that he made, like the uh, redesigning of the Naira and some other things that people complained about. But right now we have a new sheriff in town, and we are still seeing this. One dollar selling for 1,030 Naira. Please say something about it. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, let me use an analogy to explain what is happening. Okay? The, the uh, unification, the so-called unification of the market, I, I, I say so-called because the markets are not being unified. As you are saying that the Naira is 1,000 plus uh, to one single dollar in the, in the official the so-called official market, it is not up to that. Maybe 700, 700 800. Yeah. So there is still some 200 naira arbitrage that the, 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 the boys who are connected are still eating from. Yeah? So there is no unification yet. But let us just say that government announcing the unification of the exchange rate was like a doctor trying to understand the extent of the sickness of a patient. Because immediately government floated the exchange rate, we now saw the real value of the dollar. It told us that we must give 1,000 units of our currency to get $1. That was the real market-driven value of our dollar. So this is a doctor who now sees the extent of the illness of the patient. What is they expected of this doctor is now to begin to apply medication. Now that they know the extent of the illness, they begin to apply medication so that the patient will start getting better. Safe patient will start getting better. Unfortunately, in Nigeria, after we floated and we saw the extent of the sickness that, oh, we need a thousand plus units of our currency to buy one dollar, there has been no single medication that the current government has applied to help the situation. A single medication. If there is any single medication that the current government has applied, I would like somebody to put it forward to me now and to those who are viewing us. Because now that we, are, we understand that we need a thousand units and more of our currency, to get one dollar. There are only two medications, two medications that are needed to help the Naira to begin to recover. Medication number one, we need to increase the inflow of the dollar into the Nigerian economy. We need to increase the supply of the dollar because the more the supply of a commodity, the less the price. That is medication number one. Medication number two, we need to reduce the demand for dollars. Because the less the demand for a product, the less the price. I would like anybody to tell me 
that since the assumption of office on May the 29th, 2023, the Tinubu government has implemented policy that increases the supply of dollars to the Nigerian economy or reduces the demand for dollars in the Nigerian economy. If there has been any such policy, I would like to be educated about it. As far as I'm concerned, with my interest in public affairs, there has not been any single policy direction or execution or implementation in either of those two areas. So if that is not happening, how do we expect the patient to get better? If we now saw that, oh, the patient is having this serious illness and there is no medication that is being applied to the patient, the only result is that the patient will only get worse. And that is why the Naira Oh, Nick, I don't know what's happening. I can't hear you anymore. Uh, we do hope. Okay. So I've seen that. Okay. Can, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. We lost your audio for a moment there. Okay. Uh, 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 yes. So, so the government is not doing anything to help the Naira. Instead, instead, the government is actually taking steps to make the patient worse. The doctor is making the patient worse. And how do I mean? Number one. To help the supply of the dollar, the government needs to curb insecurity in the Niger Delta so that those who are stealing our crude oil will no longer steal our crude oil. That way, we will sell more barrels of crude oil and there will be increase in supply. Has this government done anything about this? Absolutely not. You know, they, 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 our, our Navy, our Army, our Air Force, our police, our DSA, all the security agencies, are carrying on as before, giving room to people to steal. The other day, they send and say, oh, we are going to investigate Nigerian security forces for not providing security in the Niger Delta. But we have a chief executive who, who appointed the security chiefs, who should call them, summon them, be the right... ...if they steal our... ...has been sacked for stealing Nigeria's crude oil, for allowing the room for Nigeria's crude oil to be stolen. That is on the supply side. On the demand side, the president is junketing around the world. His vice president is junketing around the world. And for them to go about around the world, they are demanding the dollar. So instead of reducing the demand for dollar, we are increasing the demand for dollar to pay extra code, to pay all the cost of junketing around the world. Not only that, a few days ago, this government went and lifted the ban on the importation of 43 items. Once you lift that ban, it means people are not going to approach the central bank to demand for dollar to bring in toothpicks that was on that uh, ban list. So that is not going to help the Naira. Instead, it's going to pressure the Naira more because the, the items that were banned that don't demand the dollar for don't bring them in, have now been unbanned by the government. So for me, it just appears that this government is totally bereft of ideas. They, they don't have a solution, or they have solution, they don't have the political courage to implement it. There is no direction, there is nothing that is coming on the table to, to, to give us the confidence that they know what is the problem with the Naira, and they are ready to solve it. So that is my view on this sliding exchange rate. Unfortunately, if no medication is applied, we are going to see a 2,000 Naira to one dollar in due time yeah i know you mentioned some things but like you said using your words medication one is to make sure that uh, the naira uh, the the dollar is in is not in short supply into the country now how how do you think the government should go about that how much more do you think the government should go about that Okay, so we can tackle the medication one, which is increase the supply of dollars in the economy. Mm -hmm. The lowest hanging fruit, hanging fruit for that is stopping the stealing of Nigeria's crude oil. The government itself consists that about a barrels of our crude oil is being stolen, a barrels per day. You stop that, it then means that Nigeria will be able to sell a million barrels more of crude oil. 
Crude oil is about eighty-eight dollars now. They just approximate it to ninety dollars for the purpose of analysis. Mm. If we now sell one million barrels of crude oil at ninety dollars each, that is going to be ninety million dollars per day times thirty days will be two point seven billion dollars. Point seven billion dollars every month for 10 months it will be two point for 10 months it will be 270 billion dollars coming into the country the question is that is it doable yes it's doable because the crude oil is being produced and people are still in it i mean the crude oil is there the government only needs to tighten security in the Niger data and that we stop that is number one number two as we speak today the nnpc once they sell the crude oil that has not been stolen and we succeed in selling it they turn instead of bringing those dollars that they sell, sold crude oil so now that crude oil is 88 dollars 90 dollars we should have been very happy because our crude oil will now be generating a lot more dollars for us and we'll be bringing the dollars into Nigeria, helping with the supply medication. But those dollars are not coming back to Nigeria because immediately the NNPC sells the crude oil. They turn the entire dollars that we have earned, the billions of dollars we have earned, to refineries abroad so that we will now import petroleum products. If this government that came into office, actually this government got certificate of return in February, of 2023 so if you look at february you have march you have april you have may you have june july august september we are into october now this government is into the eighth month eighth month that they know that they are going to take power and they are into office in the fifth month since they actually took power have you heard this government team talk about refinery anything is there anything that is being done the group managing director of the NNPC or CEO, as they call him now, he's still in place. The man that couldn't swap our refineries for the whole years that has been, been in office, he's still in office. This government has not raised any tax force. Are you, are you with me? Yeah. Are you with me? Yes, please. Are you with me? Yes, go ahead. Yes, this government has done nothing. Mm -hmm. Increase the dollar supply because we will no longer use our crude oil cells in dollars and give them to refineries abroad. We'll be refining here, so we'll bring the dollars in. Again, we this government is, is doing nothing about power supply as we speak today. Nothing. And it is power supply that we enable the manufacturing sector in nigeria to boom so that we will not start exporting products that we're manufacturing when we export products we get dollars to come in into this country even uh food we can export raw food all over the world people are sucking oranges eating bananas watermelon and all of that in their raw state but we cannot even do agriculture because uh, bandits, kidnappers, and all sorts of uh, terrorists have driven farmers away from their from their farmland. Has this government done anything concrete in the six in the, in the almost six months they have been in office to address the insecurity in the farming areas of our country? And by now, uh, IDPs would have been started returning to their to their farms so that they can start food production which we can export and bring in more money something like that so you can see that the government is doing nothing about the supply medication and if we go to the demand med uh, demand medication it will be the same thing let me pause otherwise i can go to the demand medication and also uh, describe what what is not happening nothing that is happening okay. by this government we will, we will revisit it if we have the time to do so but now uh, the, the, the immediate thing that made us bring this topic is the fact that uh, duty has become a two, has had a 200% increase and the importers are groaning now. We, we do not even know 
how to marry these two. On the one hand, uh, they've been given free hands to get the dollar and do the importation. But uh, when the, the goods that they have been asked to bring gets to the, where they should get to to be cleared, their duties have risen to 200% from what it used to be. And how will these things come into the country uh, if the, the duties have gone as, as high as that? So, I don't know. What do you think? Well, uh, it, it only means that uh, the, the misery index, the misery index by uh, uh, suffered by Nigerians is only intensifying. Because what happens here is that as the duty has skyrocketed by over 200%, uh, importers, they are not into business to make losses. They are going to transfer the entirety of, those, of, the, of the extra cost of duty and place it into the prices of the goods and services that Nigerians will have to pay for. So it's only going to bring more pain and misery to Nigerians. And the question here is that, first and foremost, if the government really wants to help Nigerians, government should not be collecting duty in dollars. Because it is because government is benchmarking duty in dollars that the foreign exchange rate is impacting on the duty. If the government says, um, if you bring it in a 40 foot container, we are going to take 100,000 from you uh, for the container, and then we are going to take uh, maybe 1, 2, 3 percent on the value of the goods from you, then it wouldn't matter what the foreign exchange is. The government will continue to take the Naira, the same Naira from the importers, so that the inflationary pressure in Nigeria will be reduced. But this government is charging the duty in dollars. And, you know, if, if they charge duty of uh, $1,000 on the container, when the Naira was uh, 150 to a dollar, that would be 150,000 Naira. Mm. Today, the government is charging the same $1,000 on that con container. Because they have now allowed that container to be, to be the, the, the dollar, the $1,000 to be priced as the existing exchange rate, that is going to be over a million. You know, so this is what is happening. So governments all over the world, they make policies to help their people because the duty of the government is to, to provide welfare and security to the people. So a government that knows its onions will not throw the citizens under the bus and say that container must be $1,000, regardless of what the exchange rate is. You must give us the equivalent of $1,000 to bring that container in. No, the government can actually say, we are pricing this container in Naira, and this is the Naira rate for the containers, regardless of what the exchange rate is. That way, the citizens will be insulated from the fluctuations in the foreign exchange rate. But this is not what is happening in Nigeria. The point is that, you know, why would a country that is so blessed with the rich, fertile, arable land, with a good climate to match, with a sufficient amount of rainfall, I'm here in Abuja, it's already raining now, with the rivers around where we can do irrigation, be importing food. Why would the government that built steel plants since the 80s will not have any one of those steel plants functioning? So we are having to import vehicles, import machinery, import all sorts of equipment into the country. Why would the government that um, uh, has refineries, allow the refineries to rot so that we are importing every single liter of petroleum products that we are consuming in the country. Why are we importing education? Why are we importing healthcare? Why are we... So, the people in government need to understand that those are the fundamentals that they need to deal with. You know, we need to go back to the basics. We need to make Nigeria a productive economy. So that we are not going to even be importing these things. And if we're not importing, you know, imagine a, 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 a farmer who is able to pound the yam for the children. The children will have more plentiful pounded yam at cheaper rate than if the farmer has to be buying the pounded yam from abroad and bringing it to the children. So the job of the of those who have uh, sought our vote and um, have uh, taken offices is cut out for them that, look, 
instead of dealing with uh, symptom, because this 200% hike in import duty is a symptom. It's a symptom of a disease. And what is the disease? The disease is our low productive capacity. We have low output rate, which has now resulted in huge unemployment, and that is causing big inflation in the country. Together, that is what we call stagnation. Stagflation, I mean, stagflation. And Nigeria's economy is actually not suffering from inflation. It's suffering from stagflation. So even the policies of the central bank fighting inflation are wrong because our, our illness is not inflation. It is stagflation, of which inflation is just part of it. You know, the others, of course, low output and unemployment. So we, we just want the people in We don't do, we just want it to deliver. Okay, so let's wrap it up with uh, going back to medication two that you gave so that we have a full context of what you were saying and then get some solutions that uh, uh, can be applied if the relevant authority are uh, listening to this program. So your medication two is to make sure uh, that, uh, okay, the first one was to bring in more dollar and the other one was to make sure that people don't need the dollar so much. So how are they going to go about that as we wrap up? Exactly. So medication two is to reduce the demand for dollars, bring down the demand for dollars, cut the demand for dollars. And there are low-hanging fruits here, and there are medium and long-term solutions. The low-hanging fruit, number one, is the president and his vice president are traveling too much. Because each time they want to travel, they are going to take Naira from the budget and look for dollars and pay extra code to these uh, officials that are moving with him. I actually expect the president, in the current reality, where he wants Nigerians to endure, to tighten their belt, to lead by example, I expect the president to actually ban all foreign trips by government officials. Ban all foreign trips. Let us not, let no government official go anywhere. That alone is going to reduce demand for dollar into the billions, I can assure you. Because as I speak today, I speak to you today, if you go to any of the foreign airlines that are operating in Nigeria, all the first class and almost all the business class seats are going to be taken up by Nigerian government officials who are going abroad for one reason or the other. They need money, they need dollar to pay the fares, they need dollar to, to for extra code, they need dollar. So just stop that. Stop that for like six months. Let's see what happens. That will uh, reduce demand. The biggest demand for dollar in Nigeria today, as we speak, the biggest demand for dollar in Nigeria today is to import petroleum products. Because as we speak today, Nigerians are driving into petrol stations. They are paying Naira to buy petrol, diesel, kerosene, aviation fuel, everything. But all of that Naira must be used to demand the dollar because we must go abroad to buy the petroleum products and bring them in. And the government by now should have sorted out the process of selling off our refineries. You know our refineries were sold before. So there's a template for their sale that is already there. And if President Tinubu set up a tax team and gave them a few weeks, two to three weeks, and say, take the template where we saw these refineries before, update it to current realities, and put up these refineries for sale. But now we would have probably sold the refineries, and the investors would have already been in trying to solve that side of the problem, or the demand side. Of course, the other things that are, are causing huge demand is education. So we need to be dealing with our education so that parents will feel comfortable to keep their children in Nigeria and not demand a dollar to send them abroad. The other one is medical. Let's start dealing with our health care so that Nigerians will feel comfortable assessing our health care instead of demanding for dollar to go to India, to go to all those, things, all those places. Let us deal with the steel sector so that Nigerians will now have our locally manufactured cars, locally manufactured uh, uh, equipment that we are going to deal with. Let us deal with power sector. With power sector, our manufacturing will be boosted. So we will no longer need to demand dollar to go and bring in uh, manufactured uh, goods from across from across the world into Nigeria. So this is how we are going to apply the second medication. 
which is to reduce the demand for dollars. Okay. Thank you so much, Nika Gule, for your thoughts this morning and coming on the program to share them. Thank you. I thank you very much, and Nigeria is very capable of life. Okay, we've been talking with uh, Nick Agule, a public affairs analyst. We were looking at him, how importers are groaning over 200% surge in duty amid Naira fluctuation. And this is where we started cotton on the day's uh, breakfast, the day's edition of the breakfast. We hope to meet again tomorrow, uh, same time, that is from 7 o'clock in the morning uh, till about this time. On behalf of the entire breakfast on uh, Plus TV, my name is Nyam Gulagaji. Thank you for being there.